Hi, everybody. How are you doing? I am Johan. This is Charleston. Today's guest joining us from the beautiful city in Toronto, Ontario, former Argonaut. Oh, we might not, we not, might not be in Toronto, but um, former Toronto Argonaut, one of the better, the best CFL team, of course, that I believe in the CFL, former BC line, and now a very successful businessman, Mr. Yur James Yurichuk. Yuri, how are you doing? Where are you? I'm great, man. And I'm happy to report that I'm right here in Toronto. So you had it right. Good, good, good. Okay. <laughs> look yeah, at Charleston. Yeah. Look at Charleston already trying to suck up. Oh, man. With that. Look at that, Jack. Yeah, you see, I, I even I even put myself into a cold atmosphere in my background <laughs> just to kind of let yeah. you know that, yeah. That's not a cold atmosphere. <laughs> Charleston, that's grass, that's sunny. What are you talking about? You don't see the, the white stuff around the grass, all that snow. Oh, yeah, we've we've had a we've had a great spike on Twitter and Instagram since you've been wearing the coat. So, <laughs> up, man. Yeah. Yuri, thanks for sending Charleston the jacket. I know that out of the two of us, he's a superstar. I'm still waiting on my jacket yeah. to come to play here and be able to do that. But I think yeah, I can goes. I got, I got to send you more tequila to be able to get a jacket. It's a funny story how I know uh, Yuri uh, Charleston is that um, years ago I was in Toronto for, uh, I was repping a pharmaceutical company and we had like a two day meetings in Toronto. And the one day um, BC Lions are playing against the Argos back when Yuri was on the, uh, on the Argos. And so I, I, I text my buddy that I knew on the time, Patrick Cabongo. And Kabongo and I meet up after the game. Um, I go and all of a sudden Kabongo's like, hey, Johan, we're going out. We're going to a friend's place. And I'm like, okay, where are we going? Next thing you know, I'm at Yuri's apartment. And next thing you know, I'm there with, uh, I think Sean Gore was there, wasn't it, Yuri? And there's, yeah, yeah. there's a few other players on the Lions and Kabongo and myself. Next thing you know, we're drinking tequila like we're all Mexicans. And it's... <laughs> It's just one shot after another after another. And I ended up sending Yuri a congratulations bottle of tequila because A, I felt bad because I think we drank the whole bottle. And B, he just had his first son um, like a few weeks later. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's the diaper party. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's stand up gesture. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the way I knew Yuri. And so, I got to know Yuri, and then uh, we haven't really uh, stayed too much in contact. I know that he, you're very successful in business. Now you got three kids, and uh, keep him busy that way. But that's how I first met Yuri Chuck and Yuri. Um, I got a, a jersey of Kabongo over there, and there's a picture of us uh, back there too. So you're always going to be in the the kind of lore of of the Kabongo jersey down over there. So. <laughs> Well, I got good company over there, so happy to be there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how y'all understand Kabongo. I can't, <laughs> I, I never can understand nothing you <laughs> saying at no given time. Oh man. <laughs> it's all it's all this positive energy from that guy. So I just I just ride the flow. So, <laughs> so when he's talking, you just nod your head even yeah. if you don't know what he's <laughs> saying. Yeah. <laughs> when you when you're that big, Charleston, then you can say whatever you want, however you want. And most people are just going to go, yeah, sure thing, Mr. Kabongo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. How's that jacket, Charleston? Tell us a little about uh, this nice uh, clothing apparel that you got sent to you. You know, you know what? At first sight, I was a, I was a little skeptic because I was thinking, man, it's cold as hell out here in Saskatchewan. And then, you know, I wore it for the first time last night. And I think it was like, how cold was it last night? Minus 10, minus 12. To me, that's freezing. That's 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 nipples hard cold. So I, <laughs> but I did wear it last night and it, I, I will say it did keep me warm. So yeah. it was it was very oh, unexpected. Yeah. It did keep me warm. I like the way it fits and it was yeah. good. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be mean against the cold, lean, lean in weight, and green the sustainability, man. That's Wuxley right there. There you go. Let, I don't know where to begin with this because I want to talk a little bit about your playing days uh, to do that, but um, maybe we'll get into a little bit about how you became, uh, how you are where you are today and, and how you transferred yeah. 
you know, we have a lot of the guys um, that watch a show are CFL players or ex-CFL players. And, and nowadays it can kind of relate to, you know, how important it is to, to be thinking about something after football and the life, what you do after football, especially nowadays when you're thinking about how COVID has affected the yeah. CFL and shutting it down. You played in the CFL for six or seven years, right? Yeah, eight years. Eight years. Eight, great eight. Eight, eight. eight years. Yeah. You, uh, yeah. you know, great cup champion. You did all that. But obviously you had a plan and and had some ideas on, on what you were going to do after football. And tell us a little bit about how that – you kind of got into that and how that's taken you to where you are today. And tell us a little bit about the Wuxley movement. Yeah, happy to do so. So, um, yeah, I guess, you know, just, you know, play as soon as you get into the, the CFL, as they say, the first day you're in the door, they're already trying to replace you, right? <laughs> and so uh, it's easy to get caught up with all the, the lights and the camera when they're on you during your playing days. But you know, when you're out that door, when it's all over, you know, they're, they're, you know, for some guys, there's, they may be lucky enough where they can get in a coaching position or they can, you know, get on the panel on TSN. But, you know, a lot of guys, they, they got to kind of reinvent themselves after. And so, you know, I kind of I kind of started that process when I was playing. You know, I was I was usually, a, you know, a bubble guy uh, most of my career, meaning, you know, if there's 45 guys addressing on a roster, you know, I'm, I'm probably in that last five or 10 that are going to address. And so, you know, I'm, I always played with a, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a pressure on me that, you know, I had to perform and get out there and, and, um, or I wasn't going to be in the lineup next week, but ultimately with that, I knew I had the foresight that this football thing wasn't going to be forever. And so uh, about four years into my career, I was in BC and, you know, they kind of made it evident that, um, it was, it was time to, you know, go separate ways. And so I, I was moving to Toronto and going to restart my career there. And so at that time, I'm like, you know what, I gotta, I gotta start something out. And so at the time I was moving to Toronto with my girlfriend who was, um, who was from Brazil and I'd met in uh, BC. And so I was going to bring her to snowy Toronto in December in 2012 she and get her acclimated that. to our weather. And <laughs> yeah. so you know, I want, I was trying to woo her to stay because I was in love. And so I want to get her uh, a nice warm jacket and who makes the best jackets around? It's Canadians. It's us right here. So we have a reputation around the world. So I went shopping and there's some, you know, good Canadian brands, but in Canada, we're always making it with fur and with feathers. And, you know, I've always been like a environmental kind of guy. And I'm like, you know what, we can cut that all out. And I want to do something a little bit more sustainable, animal free. And so I did a little research. And uh, what, I, what I ended up doing was uh, going to a manufacturer in North Toronto, ended up making my girlfriend her first winter jacket. And uh, as to the question, did it work or not? I guess it did because, you know, we got married and we got three kids. And now she's a Canadian. And she, it's the only jacket she wears now is Wuxley. Wow. Now you're really setting the bar up high for all the boyfriends out there. They're going, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't mind, uh, you know, putting a few guys under the bus. I, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm high in the romance category. I, you know, my, my wife can attest to that. So <laughs> oh, this, is, this is some good news. This is a, Yuri. You got to put some more of these advice out to us on Twitter. Or we got to start following Yuri on Twitter to be able to <laughs> with the romantic category of how the yeah. fuck you keep someone yes. happy. You need, you need a, you need a relationship show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. My entrepreneurial spirit again, man. See? <laughs> <laughs> Love tips by Yuri. That's what we yeah, do. And I like the sound of that love tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, no, it's uh, oh, it's something to think about. Yeah. So Charleston, you think you can keep up with those uh with those uh with those suggestions on how to be able to do that? I know Beth's gonna be going, where's my jacket? What did you do for me lately? What are you gonna be doing? Man? That's a pretty good story. Yeah. Yeah, don't let don't let them uh your girlfriend your wives uh tune into the program i don't want to get you guys into my yeah. yeah i need a new card lambo <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my wife uh 
my wife we were out the other night so i think that's a great suggestion we got some great suggestions for christmas to come up so we can check it on your website so that kind of took off how you got the um the idea going now how difficult was it then you got an idea you yeah. just you went to a manufacturer you wooed it yeah. how yeah. how difficult was it then afterwards and the steps after to be able to get yeah, that like, yeah and I, to do all yeah. that yeah all those layers <laughs> right like the, the idea is always the easy part but it's you know it's getting all those ideas and pulling it out of orbit and bringing it to life and so you know that was a huge challenge during my playing days i remember um we we'd be up in in training camp at york university here in toronto and uh you know you know charleston those are just grueling days old school two-day practices pads on every day you know they're like 14 16 hours days but i i had uh, i was burning the candle at both ends so i'd have to go you know visit the manufacturer i go sneak off campus visit the manufacturer in the morning about five in the morning come back practice practice we'd have like a two three hour gap i go back visit the manufacturer come back and you know i'd repeat this throughout training camp and into the season and you know i didn't really tell anyone at the time, you know, for a couple of reasons, you know, if you tell the boys, you're, you know, you're doing a, a fashion brand and stuff, you know, you, you setting up to get chirped. And then, <laughs> and then like, you know, I guess when you, when you're going after something big, uh, I always just, you know, I always like to be quiet about it. Cause when you, when you start, you know, talking about it and, and without walking at first, you put up extra pressure on yourself because you haven't done anything yet. And, and so, you know, I kept it quiet for a bit and did this for a couple of years and finally launched it in 2015 and, and uh, through Kickstarter. And uh, it was good. It was a success right off the bat. We did uh, about $80,000 sales on in our first year on Kickstarter. And so that kind of uh, gave us the initial boost. And um, I played a couple more seasons after that. And then I kind of like said, you know what? I rode this, you know, football has been a great vehicle. It's, it's set the foundation of everything I am today and, and, and who I, I am as a, a business person. And I kind of walked away. It was, it was a hard breakup, but uh, it was time, you know, um, kind of never, never put in the retirement slip, but, you know, Toronto didn't kind of want me back that year. And so, you know, I kind of just uh, pursued that since. And, and um, now, now we're just, you know, kind of running with it now. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's pretty good, man. So for for all the young entrepreneurs out there, can yeah. you please give them the the info on Kickstart? I know what it yeah. is, but for yeah, the yeah, for sure. Know. So um, the beauty about Kickstarter is like you can come up with like a, a minimal viable product and and put it on this this online platform, and you get the early adopters into the brand. You you know you pitch them a two three minute video. You know this is our beautiful jackets. You know, this is what's great about them. Uh, and if you want to buy in, we can deliver it in three months. And so the great thing about that, you can kind of test the waters before you go diving in because, you know, other people do it the other way around. They go make out a hundred jackets, but then they get out there and they find a couple of things that, you know, didn't work out for some reason or another. Well, they're stuck with all this inventory. And the only thing that's killed more people than COVID-19 is inventory. So all the young <laughs> entrepreneurs do not get stuck up with the inventory. I'm allergic to it. Wise word, Yuri. So inventory, Yuri does not like. So <laughs> sell, sell, sell. <laughs> so you did, that's a, a brilliant. I mean, to be able to, to use that through Kickstarter and to be able to go through that notion of, yeah, I mean, don't get stuck with anything, pre-sell, sell everything you need to, then make the product and go from there. So how are you doing today? Tell us, you know, I love going on your webpage. You can be able to go and, and find out your story and, and you know, some key points you always see on the wooksley.com uh, uh, pages, made in Canada, animal free, using sustainable high quality materials. Um, tell some people about where you're at today. Tell us why those are so important and, yeah. um, and where you're at today. How, how is the company going? I saw you have some employees behind you. They're helping you out with your computer a few, a little while ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> able to do that. Yeah. yeah. Unfortunately, I, uh, you know, being in football for that period, I didn't keep up with all the technical skills and, you know, how to open up the chats and stuff. And you know, there's a new one every week I'm trying to get acquainted to. And so, 
you know, yeah, business is going well. We're, um, you know, obviously, you know, like a Swiss watch like or Italian suit, a Canadian made jacket, there's nothing like it. You know, we, we have a reputation for making the best in the, in the world. So, you know, part of the authenticity is making it here uh, in Canada. And uh, a big part of our brand is, is live warm. That's our mantra. So live warm in our jacket, but we want to encourage people to live warm in their everyday life. And, you know, part of that is making sure that we do it in a right here at home in, in fair labor conditions, uh, being warm with the world, you know, sustainable fabrics and, and uh, keeping animals peacefully out of the equation. And we like being warm with our service and our community. And hopefully, hopefully that reverberates out to the larger community to, to affect all of uh, all the people that are around us. And so, you know, that's kind of the, the North Star, that live warm premise. It kind of guides the brand and, and helps make decisions easy for me. Um, you know, we're always trying to make the warmest one, whether it's a jacket or what we're doing in the community. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much the brand right there. Brand. And where so where are some of the places we can find it here in the coldest place on the planet at yeah. many times during the month here yeah. in Saskatchewan? We need to know where some yeah. of the places that you have it outsourced or is it a lot of the business you do online? Yeah, so you know, uh last year we had about 20 uh retailers scattered across the country, but you know, this thing, I don't know if you heard about it, Corona came in and like, it's been like a complete meltdown of the economy. Um, you know, sadly, some of the, the mom and pop shops, the storytellers were so important, you know, they just haven't been able to come up the, the same way. And so, you know, March, April, we kind of, that was ordering season. And so we kind of felt that, you know, all, all businesses were feeling the pressure, obviously. And we're like, okay, you know what? We'll let everyone regroup for a year. We'll just sell um, direct uh, D to C, direct to consumer, they call it. And so, so we have a nice shop down here, downtown Toronto on Queen Street West. Uh, we have online shops. We used to go all over the country doing consumer shows, about 30, 40 shows a year. And those got canceled too. But, you know, fortunately enough, we built the community before this all came in. So we've had good support and they're spreading the word. Um, you know, whenever we give a good experience, you know, hopefully uh, people tell their friends and, and they can come see us online. We're definitely, yeah, we're, we're doing virtual appointments too. So, you know, just like we're having a zoom call, we can use zoom call into us and we'll show you, uh, you know, which jacket might be best for you before you, uh, you pull the trigger. Good to know. Good to know. Very, very innovative, I guess you could say. <laughs> trying to trying to adapt with the times as best you can. I guess, it's about survival skills yeah. at this moment yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I'm like Zuckerberg over here trying to keep up with all the technology. <laughs> so, uh, man, I told you this jacket is nice, man. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I, you see, I ain't. I haven't worn my other jacket yet. Yeah. yeah. Since yeah. since I put this one on, you know, I've been. <laughs> Very comfortable yeah. in this one. Yeah, we had to find something, man. The uh, the two X for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's probably one of the hardest questions ever to answer as as a businessman, as a businesswoman. Yeah. What can we see from the future for Wooksley? Do, do what do you it? have for us for the future? Yeah. What is the what is the fashion? Will the fashion zone stay the same all the way through? Very consistent. Will there be a change in the way you do things in the yeah. fashion and the way it goes? Will yeah. there be a different vision that you'll yeah. have? Let me take you there, Charleston. <laughs> take me there. Take me there. <laughs> take me we're, there. we're in the year 2025. <laughs> Coronavirus. We found the vaccine. Humans <laughs> on, can now emerge back into society. People are going to work. They're no longer working at home because they want to see other people. And they're wearing Wuxley jackets all over Canada because this live warm, this live warm mentality, it, it runs in our Canadian veins is what people want. People want to support local. They want to be nice to the environment. They want to be nice to each other. And they want these good, positive vibes. And, you know, they're so happy to see that Wuxley's not just a winter jacket company anymore. They're actually doing four seasons. And so there's going to be more gear so you can stay Wuxed up all, all year round. And, and, you know, the prime minister is quite happy about all of this. And, uh, and so that, 
that's the the first chapter in 2025 of this story. <laughs> <laughs> Very good futuristic vision for us to be able to see that is that there's going to be- was good. That was good enough for me, man. Five year plan, four seasons. That's all yeah. I need to hear. <laughs> Carlson, do you guys ever talk about, I mean, Yuri obviously had this going when he, when, you know, he was playing in, in training camp. Do you guys ever talk about that with some of your boys about what to do afterwards? And, 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 you know, at what point, like, obviously Yuri was foreseeing this when he's in the camp in 2012 and, you know, uh, three years later after football, he was, he had everything jump started. What did you guys, do you guys ever talk about that? Or, or is that something that you think that not enough guys are doing, um, you know, ahead of time to be able to be prepared? Oh, you know, I think it's, I think guys are aware of it but it's about implementing it. Like guys just don't know how to implement it, how to go about it, like what direction to take. And I know every team I play for, if you've been my teammate before, I talk to all my young rookies about it every single time. Like don't put all your eggs in one basket. Don't sit up here and, and think that football is all you got. Football is, is all you need. I mean, it's a stepping stone, but you got to use it as a stepping stone to build towards something else. You can't just go through this game and think you're going to play for it. 12, 13 years, eight, even eight years. You can't think you're just going to go into this game and play for eight years. I mean, the life expectancy for a, a CFL player might be two years. Yeah. So, I mean, it does, you don't stick to a team very long. It's a lot of turnaround in a CFL. So you really got to take advantage of your opportunities when you get paid. I say when you're playing professional football, you're only going to get paid one big year, one big paycheck, maybe two if you're lucky. But yep. you got to take advantage of that one or two big paychecks that you get and do something smart with it. So yeah. you're, you're, who I want to, I want kind of want to go into your football days. Um, you, who are some of your big influencers when you were starting to play in the CFL? You started off, you got drafted out of a, you got drafted by BC and, and you're playing there um, and then moved on to the Argos. But I mean, when you think back on your football playing days, who are some of the players that had the biggest kind of positive impact on you? Yeah. Who are the guys that you kind of looked up to and go, man, yeah, that guy is awesome or to be around or in the yeah. room. And, yeah. and, you know, it's, it's always like being around like the good energy guys, like the Kabongos out there, um, you know, Iraqi who, who I played with in, in, uh, in BC, you know, the, the guys that, you know, you're having a good time and, and, you know, the, you guys are on the same wavelength of, you know, wanted to, to build a great football team, but, you know, having a good, good time, um, keeping the positive vibe. So, you know, those, those are two of the guys that uh, influenced me quite a bit. Um, you know, always, whenever I, I ran into Charleston and stuff, he's always been another good positive guy, whether I saw him at like one of the great cuts or, um, and so, you know, it's, um, you know, it's a brotherhood in the league. And so, um, you know, the opposite of that would, would be, uh, you know, some of the guys that, you know, just didn't, didn't bring those positive vibes, but, you know, so I think, you know, I, I was blessed to always have the good positive guys around me and, and um, you know, those are the kind of guys I'd like to stick around and, and hang out with. So with that, Yuri, I want to talk, I want to ask you a little bit about what you think about the state of the CFL and, and how that, so what did you think about this year? You're a former, you know, CFL player, you're an alum, yeah. What, were, what were your thoughts on the season being canceled? What did you think about how uh, things went down in that regard? Yeah. Are you, in, was, are you uh, in the next commissioner race? That, <laughs> please, please say that you are. <laughs> I'll do a campaign. I'll be, I'll be, uh, you know, I'll be the, the second man in command. If you want to go for a Charleston. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll be, That's not a bad I'll, idea. Charleston for commissioner. I like the ring of that. Uh, better. I'll, be, I'll be a top eight advisor. Um, <laughs> You know, yeah, it was raw, right? Um, it, it was raw, as, you know, it, it was tough. Um, you know, a, a lot of pressure with, from both sides as the players and, and the league and stuff. And, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I just hope that it's, it's all ready to go this season. Uh, we understand the virus a little bit more and the impacts and how we can play safe. And, you know, hopefully that can convert in something and get, get the football product back on the field because that's, that's just at the end of the day, that's all we want to do is play football and see some football on TV, whether it's having the fans in the stands or not, you know, just get the boys out there. They, they can create the energy. I've been, I've been loving the NFL this season without this. doesn't matter if there's fans there or not. 
you know, on a football field, there's so much players and coaches, and there's already 200 people there that create that energy. And so you can still see that, whether it's on TV or live in person. Yeah, no, definitely. Charles, how do you feel about that? Man, that sounds amazing, man. I mean, I hate watching NFL football. I mean, I'm tired of what I don't like watching football in general. Anyways, the only reason yeah. I watch NFL football is because I play fantasy football with my CFL teammates. Yeah. So it's just like, man, <laughs> I would rather be playing than sitting here watching. I know that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you have any anything planned up then uh, lined up for the for the Grey Cup week or anything like that? Yuri, do you do anything, any festivities on behalf of Wexley or do you do anything in that regard? Yeah, you know, I used uh, we were hooking up with the CFLPA the last three or four season. And, and you know, I think I've been probably to the last six of eight Grey Cups. So, you know, there, there's a big void in my November here. So <laughs> <laughs> And you were scheduled. Uh, you were scheduled to be here this year for the Great Cup in Regina. Oh man! One of those times I would have supplied with all the tequila for you. Yeah. Uh, we could have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kabonga would have been here for sure again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. So you, you can you can pass that that space on your couch off to somebody else now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you said that because Kabongo stayed two nights over my place back in 2013. Uh, last time the great cup was here, he stayed and crashed in my place. And then he stayed at the hotel for the other few nights, but we had a long week of, of, of heavy, uh, uh, celebrations you could say. And it was anytime, like you said, you get to spend a time around a friend that's got that vibe and that energy and positive fun. Even if you can't understand them, Charleston, it's still good. It's all good. <laughs> you got to have good times. <laughs> so, 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 so you're, yeah. I know you were saying that you were more of a bubble guy when you play football and all this good stuff, but what was your greatest moment as a, as a CFL athlete? Yeah, no, I, you know, I think it's, it's gotta be, uh, you know, uh, the great cup win. We, uh, back in 2011, uh, we started the season off at 0, 0 and 5 and, you know, look, pretty, no, this was with BC great cup 99. We started off at uh, 0 and 5 as a season. It looked pretty bleak. And, uh, you know, we, uh, even, even with that record, we still had confidence because we knew we had a, a good core of guys and we, we made a, a, a few adjustments. We, we brought in uh, Arlen Bruce and, uh, you know, things turned around. And I think we went on a, an 11 and a 10 and one or 11 and one run down the stretch. And then, you know, by the time we hit the playoffs, we're just showing up and, and, you, we knew we won the game just when we we're doing the warm ups. We just, we just had so much confidence and swag walking out there that we knew that ring was going to be ours. And so I think, you know, the feeling when you're on a great team and, and uh, you know, so I, I think that's got to absolutely be the highlight of, of, uh, of the career of winning that great cup. With, uh, I'm, trying to think. I'm trying to think who did y'all beat to win the great cup in 11? It was uh Swaggerville, uh, Winnipeg season. Winnipeg. Oh yeah. yeah. Swaggerville, that was with Odell Willis, wasn't it? And wasn't he the mayor of Swaggerville and doing yeah. that? And yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what were we doing in Calgary? I think we got steamrolled. Yeah. Uh, Edmonton took it that year in the, in the conference uh, semis. And then uh, and we went and played Edmonton. And we had to buy the first week, Edmonton, Saskatchewan, and then Cup. So. And, and champs, what do you remember about playing against Charleston? Oh, you know, he's a problem, <laughs> right? He's a problem. So, you know, uh, you know, I know he was a character, but, uh, you know, he's a good, great player on the field and, and a uh, great guy off the field. And so, you know, that's, that's, that's my uh, memories of, of playing with Charleston because probably bump, bump into him after the game too. And, and so, you know, he's, <laughs> fierce competitor and, and, uh, and uh, matching that energy uh, off the field and being a positive guy. I like the way you say it so politely, Yuri. You say that, yeah, bumped into him after the game too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine yeah. where you bumped into him at all the other times. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, I think that's why the three of us get along so well is that the off the field uh, be able to do that. So. so so about your bishop playing days, did you play with Jun Junior Turner? Oh yeah, that's my boy. I grew up with him. Yeah, he's a uh, you know another great guy. Uh, you know, I guess you rode with him for uh, quite a quite a long time there. Uh, Junior Junior taught me how to make jerk chicken. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's his specialty. Yeah, he got. Uh, you know, he he comes from a great family, so uh, you know he, he's a great guy to call a friend. And you still you still keep in touch with a few guys here. I know you you mentioned that you know Mac Mac Henry. Yeah, yeah. I grew up with him in Branton, and uh, you know it's great to see how uh, he came into the league. Like uh, you know, he was he's always been a force, and you know I lost I lost connection with him for about five, six, seven years, and then one day I just see this this animal uh, playing in the middle of the D line of uh, Saskatchewan. And I'm like, who the hell is this guy? And then uh, you know I found out it was my old buddy Mac, and you know it was great to see him that you know he. He, he took a, a different path and, and, you know, found out, found his home in Saskatchewan. And, you know, from all I've heard, they just love him there. And he's been there for a number of years now. Yeah, he's one of those guys that, I mean, he's Charleston's good friend here, right? Charleston. And then he's really definitely um, kind of doing the same thing as Charleston, blended into the community, doing things for the community, doing different things for charities and events yeah. and doing the same kind of thing that Charleston has really kind of developed into uh, a member of society here in, in green yeah. and white. Yeah, that's what it's all about. You know, you get uh, giving back to the community and, uh, you know, it's great to see that he's doing that. Yeah. No, it's been good. Max, Max has been doing a good job, man. Mac is, like I said, Mac just made his first home purchase. So congratulations to him. Oh, and, and happy birthday, man. You just had a birthday in November 1st, right? <laughs> Don't think yeah, I yeah. ain't looking. Know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you're, you, should, yeah. you, should be, you should be surprised because uh, um, Charleston never does any background for any of these shows. He just comes on and does his thing, you know, and does the thing about how he knows everybody <laughs> do that. So if he was, if he knows your birthday, he knows about your university days, and he knows oh, yeah. Bishop, Bishop Bishop University. I saw some photos. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Feel close down that old Facebook account. Yeah. <laughs> Feel special because Charleston never does any background, so he's doing that. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Charleston, anything uh, else? Bro. Anything else you wanted to ask Yuri? Um, I don't know. What do what do I want to know about Yuri? I want to know what kind what kind of last name is Yuri Chuck? What's your ethnicity? What's that? What's your background? Uh so they tell me I hail from the mountains of Ukraine. You're gonna choke. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So when you see that Chuck, that means that they're Ukrainian probably. And so you, you'll see a lot of them out in Saskatchewan and uh, they yeah. call Edmonton the Chuck. So uh, the Ukrainian people settled a lot of, uh, you know, central and Western Canada there. So that's, that's our, our that's our little bit of history uh, of, of Canadian Ukraine relations. Ha have you ever been to the Ukraine? I haven't. And I was all jealous. Uh, because I saw a couple of years back, the CFL sent uh, uh, a lot of uh, our players to go, you know, pay tribute to our troops. And, you know, thank you again. Remember the stage has passed. Thank you to all the, the people that served us and continue to serve us. And I was jealous because they got to go to the, the homeland, Ukraine, and I've never been there before. So I'll have to make a trip when this all clears up. Did you know that Charleston was on that trip? Oh yeah, <laughs> it was it was different. Look, I got I got one story for you when I was on the Ukraine. This uh, this will this will describe. The, <laughs> no, I'm not telling that one. Well, but this will describe <laughs> this will describe the whole trip. When we were when we were in the Ukraine, you know, it's all these big football players and stuff, and we got to walk around the city. We had a tour guide. They were kind of scared for us, like all our tour guides and stuff. And I was like, look. I'm sick of all this like touristy stuff. I don't want to be a part of this. I said, look, I'm going this way. If anybody else want to come with me and go this way, come with me. I want to do what the tourists do. I want to walk, I want to walk around the city. I want to see what's Ooh. going on around the city. Uh -oh. it, was about, it was about five or six other guys was like, yeah, I want to, I want to do that too. Like yeah, I want to yeah. get away from all this touristy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then one of the tour guys went with us and then she started asking us like, what do you guys want to do? What do you want to see? 
And I was like, just take us to the most popular bar. Just take us yeah. to, you know, yeah. some tour, some some not so touristy spots. Where do the locals go? Yeah. And there was a bus, like a school bus full of kids riding past us. It's me, Travis Bond, uh, Brandon Smith. I think it was, and it was a couple other players, but Travis Bond was the X factor in that group because Whoa. the kids in the bus were looking. You know, they're all, <laughs> they're all hollering at each other and they're looking there and they're pointing at, and they're pointing at us like, holy. <laughs> you could tell they were surprised. And I was thinking yeah. like, yeah. Would this be the first time that these kids ever seen a black guy before? <laughs> like, because we didn't see no black people the whole time we were in uh, the Ukraine, and we've yeah. been we were there for a day. Yeah, never seen not one. I, we were looking like I wonder this I've ever seen a black guy. So I started waving to the kids like, ah! <laughs> all the kids started looking at each other and going like, oh my god, he's waving at us. And they started waving. <laughs> That's great, man. Well, yeah. I know there's another story here that Charleston should be telling about the time that he had to find a washroom outside of uh, somewhere and he couldn't find it. Guess where he ended up peeing right beside? A church. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, a local Ukrainian just started flipping out at him and swearing at him and yelling at him and all this stuff. And then... Yeah. They won't like that over there. They won't like that. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I almost went to a Ukrainian jail. <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> that's great, man. Well, you know, that's, uh, that's good that you got to explore all this world. Hopefully, hopefully this opens up soon and we can do similar type of trips. Yeah, no kidding. I know one of the last things I want to ask you, Yuri, is that uh, I know that we, we talked to you. You just mentioned it about, you know, thanks to the soldiers in Remembrance Day. When you were playing football, you won a pretty uh, unique award uh, for your service. Um, tell us a little bit about that. You won an award that was tied to, uh, associated with the Canadian veterans. Uh, yeah. And, and does your company still have that good association with the veterans? I know for myself, I'm always wearing, um, you know, we always wear Popeyes. We always have Popeyes that are around on a lot of our yeah. stuff, but we always also like to do a lot of things for the military and, and support them, whether that's buying yeah. the camouflage uh, magnets for the cars or my hats or, you know, this yeah. is really true and, and dear to, to all of us, I'm sure. But tell us about one year award that you won. It's the Jake Garden Gardenar Award. Yeah. And and do you still do stuff like that through your company? Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, that was like the absolute highest honor that I could receive. And, you know, the... Um, it was an individual or, you know, highest individual award I've ever received and, and uh, recognition just to, uh, to be uh, recognized with, with the veterans. And, and so, you know, I, I always grew up with, um, you know, good teachers in elementary school and, and they really instilled the importance of the work that, that um, you know, the service that these veterans did for us. And so I've always kept it important to, to us. And then, and so, um, you know, with our company, we, we try to, stay up with it and, and you know uh like most canadian companies uh during remembrance day but um you know the day after uh november 12th we we did 100 percent of our proceeds uh went towards the veterans um to the poppy fund and you know we're proud of that and, and um of course you know well uh highest respect for these guys 365 and and um you know um you know continue to support any way we can we're happy to do so Another great reason to support uh, the Wuxley movements and to be able to uh, be very proud of that, Yuri. I know that's uh, a great cause, and I know Charleston's always doing a lot of things for the military. We're always trying to be able to to, yeah, to give uh, something back also to the friends yeah. and to the people that yeah, we that are serving. So, yeah. uh, Charleston, anything else then you wanted to ask uh, Yuri before we finish off? I think that's it, big dog. We yeah. uh we want to let everybody know, hopefully we'll be working with Yuri in many ways and be able to keep in touch and to follow us on our show. And we'll be able to see afterwards. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what kind of deals and concoctions we can get for some people uh, here in Saskatchewan or, or all throughout North America. we got a lot of viewers from all over the U.S. and Canada that uh, might be able to take full benefits of that. We'll keep your com company info yeah. uh, on there. And um, yeah. Yuri, anything else you wanted to add? Yeah. Hey, 
Charleston, keep those hands hot. We're coming back in 2021, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 2021. A few more last years before we make that that run for commissioner. I'm gonna oh, talk man. Talk Here we go. Here we go. We just talked about on this show. We're already planning Charleston's after for after football life, after life. So Charleston for commissioner with his uh, – Economic advisor Yuri. <laughs> I I declare my whole self to lead the CFL to victory. <laughs> okay. We got first. You got to get the CFL sack uh, record, and then after that, then you can declare your oath for uh, for run for CFL commissioner. I like that. I can't wait. <laughs> All right. Well, Yuri, we really appreciate you taking the time to be able to to join us today. Um, you know, we're going to keep on continuing to follow you and support you. And yeah. I'm, I'm even going to purchase a jacket from you. You're, you're going to see me with a bomber. I already checked out the one I want. So I'm going to be coming and purchase it online. But what we like to do is uh, Charleston likes to be able to say a few last words to all of our guests. Oh, man, Yuri, thanks for coming on the show. Captain Yuri, you're a Chuck. <laughs> hey, the one thing we do say is this is the uh, Better With Age webcast, man. The reason we call it the Better With Age webcast, because there's many things that get better with age. Not just you and your looks, sir. Not just <laughs> happy, happy birthday, by the way, one more time. But there's wine, there's whiskey, there's leather. Can't wait to that leather. No, uh, can we use leather? Can't use leather, huh? No leather. <laughs> No leather. Can't use leather. We're going to use a, a, a synthetic leather. Got it. <laughs> Talk language now. <laughs> yeah, it's called, it's called pleather in my book. <laughs> <laughs> but there's many things that get better with days, man. But the most important thing of them all is friendships. I'm glad I had an opportunity to play against you, never play with you. But we also crossed each other path a lot of times during the game and backstage, should I say. <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, so, stand up guy, man. Yeah, appreciate you guys, man. Uh, yeah, so I'm glad to call you a good. friend, man. And thanks for coming on the show, man. My pleasure, boys. All right, Yuri, all the best to you. Keep in touch. Join the Wuxley movement. Listen to him. Listen to him. <laughs> <laughs>